everybody, welcome back to Monster Loves You. And we are no longer a monsterling, we are growing up. And we're now in a hovel. This is our new house, our new hovel. It looks kind of awesome. And we're an adolescent monster, so what should we do? All right. The more brave, clever, ferocious, kind, and honest you are, the more other monsters will grow to respect you. Get enough respect, and you might someday affect important world events. Okay. So we gotta gain the respect of, uh, our monster peers. You wake up inside a well-appointed hovel. This is your new home. I just read that. Just click the next thing, Pixel. Click the next thing. Oh, look at us! Look how grown up we are! We're blue! We're adorable! I don't know what these things are. What is... Uh... Oh. Oh, okay, that's our respect thingy. Awesome. Sorry about that. Um... Yeah. Let's go see that big bad world. What's up, world? And let's go into town! Um... Let's do... that one. Outside your house, Nash Ganesh charges from a nearby bush and sends you tumbling. Challenge! She screams at the top of her lungs. It's on. Alright. Leap at her and crush her. Square off and wait for Nash Ganesh to make a mistake. Uh, take turns slapping each other, decline her chat. You know what? She leaped at me. We're gonna crush her. Flat, flattened under your bottom, Nash Ganesh admits defeat. She was always weak to attack from above. I got you, my mad monster skills. Uh, go on another adventure. Um, I like this little face. I want to do that one. Muppish Moral slithers up to you and says, "I wonder if you can confirm a rumor for me." Mm, watch those rumors, kids. Watch those rumors. Mushroom who- Yeah, see, I don't know who this person is. Mushroom Morrison? Who are you? Uh, yeah, like, who the hell are you? Who are you? Mushroom is an elder monster who's been around for a long, long time. She prints the Oban Harbinger, a short newspaper for monsters. Alright. Um, I'm not gonna say anything to you, lady. You say, no thanks, and walk away. Behind you, Mushbla mutters, very interesting. What are you trying to hide? May not have been the best choice. Hmm. Might have been a bad choice. Uh, um, ooh, let's try singing. We can sing, we got a pretty monster voice. Gobclaws has found a human artifact, a black circle. She shows it to you very carefully. Look, it has grooves on it. Uh, smash it with a rock. Uh, try to figure out its purpose. Or take a closer look. Mm. Let's, let's, uh, see what it does. You hold up the black circle, looking at it, tapping it with your claws, and tasting it with your tongue. Gob Claws says, I already tried that. So, alright. Either must be a hat or a weapon. Mm, I'm gonna say it's a hat. Totally a hat. The other monsters are impressed by your impromptu fashion show. Gopclaws thanks you as she takes back her new hat and waddles away. You're welcome! I hope it was a hat, but you know, you're a monster. Anything can be a hat. Doesn't really matter, cause you're a monster! Um, let's do this one. Catalo Aslet limps towards you. He points one huge eye at you and cackles, I got a shock working on a power line, and it's still down. Help me out. Okay. That wasn't weird. 
uh, how dangerous is this? Because I don't want to die yet. I'm still a young monsterling. If the electric fluid inside the line gets on you, well, it hurts like a million bees. That sounds like suck. Only they're not bees because they make it, make it, because they make it honey. All right. I don't think that's a word. Uh, you're crazy. Crazy. Oh no, I lost bravery. Kayla nods and limps away, looking for someone else to help him. Oh no, I need to gain back my bravery. That was a horrible decision. Horrible decision. Maybe this will help me. You see Jaggery in a haze of busy, angry yellow bees. It looks like he stole a beehive off of a tree and took it home. You can see why. Honey is irresistible. Jaggery motions for you to help him. Uh... Hmm... Yeah, who cares about some bee stings? Let's, uh, let's get some honey. You tear apart the hive and scoop out, ow, some honey. Ow, slurp, ow, slurp. It's delicious, but this isn't much fun. Uh, yeah it is, because we got our bravery back. Got my bravery back. Um, so, got our bravery back. I'm interested in this road. It's such a nice day today. Perfect weather to wander outside of town. Though you're not really supposed to leave Omen until you're older. Mmm. Being defiant. I like it. Walk the forest paths nearish Omen. Just take a nap in the sun right here in Portland Square. No, we're gonna be nearish. We're not leaving. We're nearish. What glorious weather. The sun is shining, the birds are singing, squirrels are squirreling, things away in their squirrel homes. I just like saying squirrels are squirreling. Uh, keep walking. We're, we're close enough. You really don't see why young monsters are supposed to stay in town. What's gonna hurt you out here? A squirrel? A tree? Squirrels can be kind of vicious. I mean, now and then, but we're a monster. We can take a squirrel. Hey, what was that? You think you see a bear? Or is it a human? Humans are probably worse than bears in this little town thing. Oh, it was just a twig snapping. Everything's fine. It could be trouble. Uh, I'm gonna keep going. You soon forget the sound of the snapping twig. It was probably a friendly badger or a clumsy bear. Silly old bear. Stepping on a snap. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Now, my decision is I can keep going and something horrible can happen to me or I could turn back now. Let's just keep going. I'm this far out. You heard the sound again. Then two more times in rapid succession. Something is behind you, under the cover of the trees. Oh, get ready to fight. It's a human carrying a weapon made of wood and string. It, she, she uses the weapon to fling another thing at your direction. Uh-oh. See, I got myself into trouble. Oh no. The sharp thing jabs into you and you shriek. The pain is worse than any claw or tooth. It's not a deadly weapon, but it eats at your body and mind. Let's hide in the trees. You duck into another row of trees and stay out of sight. The human flings two more wooden things in your general direction, but you stay quiet and she moves on. Yeah, let's go home. You manage to hightail it out of there with your hide intact. You tell your friends who shudder at the account. I got an epic story to tell. So it was kind of worth it. Uh, let's see. Mm, I like this face. A small crowd gathers in the square. Prudence and Gritmitten 
are in some kind of argument. I love the name Gritmitten. I don't know why, but I do. Uh, let's see what it's about. Nash Ganesh whispers to you. Gritmitten says he saw a human wearing a coat made from a monster's hide. That is some scary stuff. Prudence said she saw it too, but it was just a costume. You watch the elders discuss the situation calmly and quietly, with only a little clawing and spitting. It sounds like a good day. Sounds like a good day. Minimum clawing and spitting. It's not so bad. Let's see. Offer to help. Humans are dangerous. Investigate this by running out to the human city of- Yeah, that sounds bad. Or listen to the debate some more. Hmm. Hmm. Let's listen to the debate a little bit more. The debate rises into shouting and rock throwing a few times, but it's mostly civil. Prudence keeps shaking her head and smiling, as though Grit Mitten is a fool or a monsterling. Hmm. That makes Grit Mitten's temper flare like lightning naturally. Let's keep watching. Grit Mitten says humans have made clothing out of monsters. Prudent insists that he's mistaken. Neither shows any sign of backing down. The other elders wander away. Hmm. Maybe they will listen to me now. So. They all seem to be paying attention to you, yes. Oh gosh. Let's see, should I support Grit Mitten? Should I support Prudence? Hmm. I don't want to mess with them. Even though that'd be fun, I'd probably lose some honesty and kindness, so that would be bad. I did get attacked by a human, but I don't think they would wear our hides. I mean, they might. I don't know. I'm gonna go with Prudence, though, but I do- Oh, but I love Grimmitten's name. That's- that's a good way to, like, pick something, right? Prudence nods to you and says, See, I'm always right. Humans wear clothes all the time. This fool just thinks some animal hide is from one of us. Some slimy animal, perhaps. I feel kind of bad for back in Prudence now, because she had to act kind of bitchy. But, you know, hey. Like a big furry snail. Yeah, that makes sense. Because we totally have furry snails. Uh, let's do one more. One more, because I am addicted. Uh, let's do this one. Squeak thud, squeak thud, squeak thud. You follow the odd sound until you find Gobclaws. She's dragging a dusty, broken wagon b back home. Looks like hard work. Uh, yeah, what's in the wagon? I'm curious. The wagon's full of more wagon pieces. I might be able to put it back together. Can you help me? From her limp, you gather she has a busted leg at the moment. Oh, I can't really, like, leave you to yourself because I'm kind of fond of your weirdness. You flex your claws, still not fully healed from a recent fight. You could hurt yourself if you help her. Apologize but decline. Do it yourself. You can do it better anyways. Help her pull it. I'm gonna help her, cause if we both do it together, maybe I won't get hurt. It's easier to move with both of you helping. Gobclaws thanks you, and the two of you enlist the scrap goat to help even more. See? So much helping! The goat is strong enough to give you a wagon ride. The goat is strong enough to give you a wagon ride once the wheels are on. And he does. Because he's a goat of awesome. Awesome goat. Alright guys, we're going to leave it there for now. Thank you so much for watching. I just adore this game. Look at me, I am adorable. I am so cute. I just mm, love this game so hard. Thank you again so much for watching. And I'll see you next time.